Okay, what is up everybody and today we're back again with another video and today like I promised on the discord server Which you can join down below by the way Just hit that link make sure you're over 13 years old So you're allowed to officially have a discord account that being said today I'm gonna to be talking about how to hunt diamonds or how to get more diamonds and rares in general so there are two main methods that people go for. I'm just going to cover the more basic one first. And that is basically to just go on a multiplayer server, hunt whatever animal zone time there is currently. Or if you want to hunt a specific animal, make sure you know what string time. And then just go through the whole list of servers and just join each server until you find one that has the drink time. And then go to all the spots where you know that that animal drinks. And then basically just go through servers and look if you can find anything it's basically like the lottery like you can either find a server that has a diamond or a server that does not of course make sure whenever you go on these multiplayer servers be respectful and kind to the other people on there so if there's a lake where you want to go and somebody's already there don't just come in there and run in there because they might be chasing something good there or they might be hunting in that area and have something that they're tracking so obviously make sure you're respectful and nice around the people on that server who are there before you and don't just assume it's your own map you can do whatever you want because it's not it belongs to somebody else but obviously it is something that can always help you and something that can spice up the game as well as you never know like i said it's 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 a it's a lucky it's a lucky game like you can either find a really good server that has a ton of stuff or you can find a server where the host is really active and does a lot of grinding and maybe there's just nothing on that map so it's a win-lose kind of situation you can either be really well like really good with it or really bad with it i've had both types of experiences but it usually does pay out in a longer session rather than in a shorter session now Option number two is the one that I prefer doing mostly if I don't get like if I don't like if I want to have something new basically this is what I don't do like what I'm trying to say here is I grind the game a lot and I do it mostly in single players just because the numbers are there and it's a situation where I know eventually I'm going to get what I want. But obviously the game just kind of dies out on you over time because you're just doing the same thing over and over and over again. So that's how the multiplayer thing has the pro thing because you can just hunt whatever you want on multiplayer and you're almost always going to find at least something cool. Maybe not what you're looking for, but you're going to find something cool. But like I said, the single player method is the one that has the numbers speaking for itself. So the way this game works essentially is you have your animals they're in certain weight classes or weight estimates let's take the white tail deer because that's kind of what we're going for here on latent today and you have two weight classes for the males actually you have three you have i think it's the 55 to 70 70 to 85 and 85 to 100 for the weight estimates now they can go higher obviously with a great one but that's the only animal that has a great one so most of them have a max weight range that ends at a certain number now if you have a white tail deer that you shoot that has a 85 to 100 estimate if you kill that animal it most likely will stay in an 85 to 100 estimate for its weight but if it's like really close to 85 it's like 85.13 kilograms or something like that it might go down to the 70 to 85 kilo range same thing happens as well with one that's 75 to 85 and maybe it's 84.94 kilos it has that higher chance of going up in the weight class but generally the animals will stay in that same weight class now like we saw in the previous video on late and lake where i was setting this all up you could see that weight doesn't matter as much anymore on true rack animals in terms of their score because they are randomly configured you just have to make sure that your animal is in the set weight class and not below because that is the main kind of focus point so if you have a 70 to 85 
range white hill deer it's not going to score diamond just because they have to be over 85 kilos to get that higher rack configuration now in terms of rares the numbers are looking even better than the diamonds because the rares there's basically let's say one in a thousand is going to respawn in as an albino melanistic piebald whatever so if you shoot 500 deer out of the next 499 you're going to be guaranteed to get at least one of those rares now i'm not saying that that's the official number that's just to explain you the point so basically every single time you kill an animal the statistic goes from being one out of a thousand to one out of 999 one out of 998 997 and so on until it basically becomes a guarantee now the same thing happens kind of with the diamonds but the diamonds are a little bit more on the common side depending on what animal you hunt for example white tailed deer are pretty common as they only have like they can only be level one level two or level three so meaning that a level three is basically a guarantee and a level two has a small chance let's say a 10 percent chance of making diamond probably lower than that but just so we can keep the math simple here if you only have those three levels and two actual like weight classes your chances are pretty high that within a couple of days of grinding as long as you don't have any other diamonds on your map you are going to be getting something good at some point now i'm not saying it's a guarantee every single time but you do have to you will get one eventually like i said also in the video yesterday with the albino lion make sure you don't only grind that one animal make sure you kind of sweep away all the other diamonds that you could potentially have on your map just so you're not killing those off not killing those off but having your diamond capacity at full so that even if you do kill all of those max weights nothing can respawn as a diamond because your map just physically cannot handle any more diamonds and it's at that kind of cap so before you start all of this make like do a whole run through of your map and do it like after a couple of in-game days again just to make sure that you don't have i don't know for example i might have a diamond moose somewhere on my map which is preventing me from getting another white tail deer because i also maybe have a level three duck somewhere something like that it's just you have something you have to keep in mind now another thing that is important obviously to mention here is how you set this up so if you look at my map i haven't completely redone this after i lost all my map progress but what you'll see is basically wherever there's a white tail zone around 200 meters away from that i'll have a tripod stand and a tent placed and i have that here i'll have that here i have that over here i have that up here i have a tripod over here with a house i have a tent right here with a tripod stand right there i have a tent right here with a tripod stand there i'll add some here and then i'll just go around my map and find other areas as well but what i'm basically doing is if i go here i can fast travel really quickly i can change the time make sure you go somewhere where that animal is not so you don't kind of interact with the area where they might be pathfinding towards their zone and then after maybe 30 or 20 minutes in game i'll come i'll start at the first one like the first location go out go on my tripod stand and just look and see if i have any white tail deer around and currently it seems like they are all hiding back there in the brush or just coming in but there are no males here right now which is gonna happen over time you're gonna have some areas where there's more males some areas where there's less but if they're hiding in this brush make sure you do bring a collar as that does really help you out but if i was just setting this up fresh i'd find the zone and then around 200 meters away I'd go ahead, place a tent, place a tripod stand, and then for future times, I have my setup done. That's all I need for this setup. And then I can just always just go really quickly, fast travel to that said location, go in the tripod stand, not have to worry about hunting pressure at all because obviously if you kill an animal from a tripod stand, it's only one fourth of the normal hunting pressure. Now here, before I even go in the tripod stand, I can already see that we don't have any male white tail deer around here now i do know i have a second zone back over here for which i might try and call them in 
and while I call those guys in, I'm just going to explain some other stuff as well that you have to keep in mind that if you fast travel to a tent within a radius that the community figured this out by itself, this wasn't officially said by the devs, but in an area of around 100, 150 meters, nothing will spawn in. So it will seem like there's no animals around and only once you leave that radius of 150 meters will those animals actually spawn in so they're basically like they're not there unless you're far enough away from the tent that they'll kind of reactivate in a way so just make sure you don't place those tents too close to the zones because otherwise you're just never gonna see those white-tailed deer or whatever you're grinding and just to clarify as well another thing i keep mentioning white-tailed deer here this is not a white-tailed deer specific thing you can do this for anything that is how i got my albino red deer and most of my other diamonds that's how i got the diamond axis deer the piebald other animals obviously some of them were lucky and multiplayer that's how i got most of my like diamonds in this game is through grinding but make sure as well if you have zones that are like in brushy area that maybe you go a little bit further away and then place the tripod within the collar range so that you can just use the collar to call them in and make it a little bit easier for yourself as trying to place a tripod in there somewhere over there where you could see the zone would just not be effective at all because you would be like you couldn't see anything you only have like a very small vision plus trying to place a tent there and having to walk there you might as well not have it at all but I mean, while we're here, let me get this female out of the way because I don't currently have any males spawning there and maybe resetting that zone might help it out a little bit in the future. But now that I've kind of explained the basics, the way I usually run this when I do this the first time, so the first time I do this run, this is basically how I have my inventory set up. I'll have the tents, I have the tripod stands, and then the gun for the animal that I'm grinding at that time and nothing else because obviously you don't have the extra carrying capacity and I wouldn't recommend using a backpack at the beginning when doing this because you'll just scare off anything that you're looking for so you'll have a much harder time finding those zones of those animals. Now right here is a great example for why I want to use tripod stands because as you can see I have hunting pressure here already if usually now I'd come back here and shoot both of these guys, I would have tier 3 hunting pressure, maybe even more depending on how buggy the hunting pressure is or how completely gone it is. And with a third one coming in, I would definitely delete the zone that I'm at. But just with a tripod stand, all I'm going to get basically is 0.75 of hunting pressure if I manage to actually get all three of these guys. So I'm just going to wait for him to come here. And then what I'll do is I'll just use the M1 and just get all three of them down as fast as I can because getting all three of them down is just going to allow me to essentially get more respawns faster. And I think those should all be good hits. I'm not 100% certain, but yeah, one, two, and three. All three of them down, so... If you don't have any DLC like the 30 odd 6, the M1, the 300 canning or anything that has more shot for those different like higher classes, you can obviously do this with something like the 7mm or well the 243 is basically like the M1 but just less power and penetration. But it obviously always helps having something that's semi-automatic rather than something like the 7mm where you always have to reload after every single shot because you're probably only get, you're gonna get one animal at a time and having a tripod stand then is not really gonna be worth the investment because this will cost you quite a bit as well for just making this whole setup. So per map you can have 16 tents and I think up to 32 tripod stands and each one of those basically costs, I think it's 16,000 and if you add those numbers up, if you max out your maps, it's basically $768 per map. If you obviously took off like some of the 
like not put a tripod tent every anywhere you'd be around like at 256 or something like that for just the tents alone so this is quite a big investment but you'll get the money back over time especially if you do white-tailed deer and red deer or, so, or something like pumas where the cash is not great for white-tailed deer i'm going to tell you that straight away you only get like 700 or 800 bucks per annual downed but if you then also do something like red deer on the side you can even do the females because they'll give you 1400 1600 per kill and if you get like four or five of those per herd you are making a ton of money also recommend another recommendation is just to go out and hunt geese because i mean geese bring a lot of money and you can probably kill one every minute so in an hour you could make easily 60k and get a ton of respawns so that is worth it as well it could go better as well like honestly for some geese you can get like maybe even like 80 an hour 90 an hour maybe even if you're lucky but you could also get unlucky and just get 40 but even then that's a lot of cash for just an hour's work in this game so i would definitely recommend you trying that out and doing the way of grinding like this and it it's a guarantee basically is what i'm trying to say the entire time the numbers speak for itself just you have to obviously look what i was talking about with the diamond requirement the diamond cap but once you do that once you don't have to do it again as long as you don't shoot any other animals now i hope this video was educational and taught you at least a little bit about how to get more diamonds and rares if you enjoyed it and enjoy the content of this channel please make sure to subscribe or at least hit the like button because that really helps my channel and this video out a lot also on top of that comment down below if you have maybe any other tips or things that you know about that i maybe skipped over in this video because i might have done that i was just giving you my opinion and my knowledge on the topic so maybe some of you guys know a little bit more about this than i do here right now but with that being said like always have a good day bye bye and peace